Hi everybody! If you are here, you are probably looking for a guide on how to run Phoenix Rallycross with the Beetle Lights, uh, or you just accidentally stumbled into one of my videos, in which case you should run the Beetle Lights. It's the best racing on iRacing. That's not an opinion, that is just a fact. Anyway, uh, let's get into the hot lap here. So this is specifically a qualifying lap, although I guess you can also see the, the exit of the Joker here, so you can get an idea of how you can run a race lap. Because really, with races this short, there, there's no tire saving. Yeah, you are uh, just running 100% the entire race. Uh, of course, you know, racing etiquette still applies. You don't run people over. Uh, but uh, unlike with oval, uh, road, asphalt, you don't have to worry as much about tire saving. Anyway, so exiting the Joker here, uh, the idea is to go as wide as you can uh, for the qualifying lap. This is also something I do when I'm typically running the Joker. Uh, it helps you get a, a, a huge run coming uh, to the start finish and helps you carry a lot of speed into the first turn. So you'll see here, uh, I exit the Joker and I, I kind of just, I come close to the wall here. I kind of point the nose there, but with the dirt, of course, you know, you're sliding a little bit. So uh, you want to make sure you're not uh, touching the edge or the, uh, or the end of the wall here because that will destroy your car. These things are, are very sensitive and you will knock your wheels out of alignment if you uh, hit it too hard. So right here, uh, what I like to do, sometimes I come over here and touch the asphalt, especially if I can feel the, the car sliding a little bit and I'm pushing out, I will, I will use the asphalt to regain grip. Uh, but you wanna make sure you're not going over uh, this curbing here. So that you can see the edge of the curbing there uh, where my cursor is circling. If you're pushing hard enough that you're going over that curbing, you're going to miss the track. Uh, you're going to miss this this dirt. You're going to miss the straight. You're going to miss everything. You're going to go off track. You're going to get a slow down penalty. So really, primary focus needs to be just staying on the track. Uh, ideally, you're going to get your car pointed forward as early as you can, so you can get a run out of out of the uh, out of the Joker, and you're going to be in a straight line as as long as possible. So right here, you can see the car is pointed forward. Throttle is at 100%. I'm trying to get this thing going forward as quick as possible. So uh, you can almost think of this like uh, like a drag strip. So you want, like obviously, uh, the earlier you get into the throttle, the more speed you're going to be carrying going into the first turn. So by this point, I'm in a straight line. You have to, have to kind of uh, adjust your angle just a little bit here to get over this curb. Uh, these turtles right here, the blue curbs, uh, they, they can be, <laughs> a bit much if you go over them uh, you can clip the edge and it's not going to slow you down so I often use them uh, I often clip the edge of these turtles uh, the turtle curbs just so I know I'm making the track as short as possible so I get in there clip it now I'm in a straight line uh, so I get up here I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little wide it's the same kind of the same idea or same concept different approach so this time, instead of going as narrow as possible to make the track shorter, I'm going as wide as possible to get a bigger run and a better angle going into the first turn. You will see here, I, I don't want to clip this, this curb here because making this turn too short is going to hurt your next turn. And the next turn is very, very important. Turn one is super, super important. You can see that the person in front of me in this practice session is already spinning and, and ruining turn one. Kind of a difficult turn. Anyway. So you're going to see, I go a little bit wide, I'm not wanting to clip that. Uh, I don't quite go all the way up to the wall. You will see some fast people do that, and you can get a better run coming down the hill. So if you look here, uh, you can see, of course, the banking creates a downhill uh, turn going into turn one. Um, actually, will this be turn two? I'm not, I'm actually not sure, but this turn here going, going into the S's. So the idea is to use the banking to, uh, to your advantage to get as much momentum as possible. So, hit the car turn, downhill, and you're going to want to, again, you can clip the edge of this curb here, especially if you get a better angle than I did here. I didn't get a perfect angle, but it, it was good enough to get me through the turns. Uh, you can clip this here just a little bit. Going through the grass here will not give you a slowdown. You're not going to get an off-track penalty. It's considered part of the track. Uh, you, you want to use this because Again, it makes the track shorter. If you go around this, you're going to be driving uh, in a true S shape, 
whereas if you go through the grass, you're going to be going straight. Uh, the light white and blue curbs are perfectly okay to hit. You can run straight over them, uh, and especially this one here, entering the S's, it doesn't present any issue at all. S like, it, it doesn't get the car off balance. It doesn't give you an off track. Again, use this space. It's there. You aren't going to get penalized, and it's not going to hurt you. Use it. So I use go. I go wide. I try to go wide here. Sometimes I will cut this short and just get uh, and just slow down a little bit sooner. Here I kind of do a combination of the two. So I go a little bit wide, and I get slowed down. So you see right here. Let's see. So if we're looking at the blue curbs, the turtle curbs on the right side, I. I pass the first curb and I'm out of the throttle. So halfway between the first and the second, I'm out of the throttle. I'm in the brake a little bit. And I'm letting the car settle right here uh, along the white line, approaching the blue and the white curbs. And once I get to the final turtle curb, I'm gassing it back up. And you're going to see here, I'll even, uh, yeah. So uh, looking from, let's see, look, let's look from the rear chase view here. So you can see I'm kind of up against the wall, like very, very close to the wall. I want to make this next turn going into the jump as wide as possible because it helps me get a better angle. So coming out of the S's and into the jump. So I'm turning early, angling myself at the wall. It looks like I'm going to smack the wall. But because, uh, well, especially in this session, the way uh, the way the dirt had been kicked up and, and the way the, the grip changed a little bit, uh, the car is sliding right here. So I can angle at that at that wall right there, and I know the car is going to push a little bit to the right, and I'm going to hit that jump at the perfect angle. Uh, this is, especially in, in these shorter races, uh, you're not going to have a lot of change in the levels of grip on the track with the dirt, like like you wouldn't dirt oval, because I mean, you come in, you run a lap or two in practice, everybody runs two laps of qualifying, and then you run ten laps. You don't have you don't have as, as much uh, wear on the surface as you do in in any other type of racing. So. Track doesn't change that much. You see here, pointed straight at the wall. Uh, I'm turning left. I'm still turning left. I hit that perfect. This is a skill. Uh, you have to get the muscle memory down. You have to practice this. Because when you first try this, if you're not ready for it, uh, or or you're, you, you, like, you don't have that muscle memory yet, you're going to hit that wall. I promise you, it's going to happen. You, you, you need to practice it. You're going to hit the wall over and over, and eventually you're going to hit this perfect, and you're going to fill it. It is truly building muscle memory. So sliding the car in here, you're going to hit the jump. Here, now watch for the throttle. The throttle is super important right here. So I'm gassing it up. I'm not going to fifth gear because that's going to get me too fast. It's going to upset the balance of the car. I'm, I'm maxing out at 84 miles per hour here. That's what I want to. Uh, that's that's how I want to hit the jump. Some people might shift up to fifth. Uh, it kind of de depends on on the feel of the car. I, I prefer fourth because it, it keeps the balance of the car uh, there. So I'm not pushing to the right. I'm not going to clip the edge of the jump because uh, once we get there, if you see it, there's a little bit of a berm on the side of the jump that will flip the car and <laughs> it's not good for you. Uh, so I hit hit the jump and I'm out of the throttle midair. So I'm making sure I, I hit the the jump at max rpms but then i'm out once i'm in the air out of the throttle and as soon as i hit it i'm back in that's because immediately the back tires start spinning and it's going to pull the car around and help you settle in for the next turn so in the air no throttle throttle as soon as i hit the car wants to immediately start sliding and i'm going to be set up for the next turn again this entire section here all muscle memory you need to practice this you are not going to hit this the first time. This is very difficult. Uh, and <laughs> maybe that's why I, I find so much enjoyment in this type of racing, because it is so difficult to get some of these uh, some of these motions down or, or just understanding how much throttle you need to put into a certain section of the track. Uh, but once you figure this out, similar like similar throttle control, similar uh, like ability to get into a, a, a slide uh, going into a turn, it's kind of universal. So once you build the skill, it's going to apply a, a, across every track you run. But you need to master it first. You have to be able to understand how much the car is going to slide, how much throttle do I need to put into it, how much throttle do I need to be applying when I'm hitting the jump. Because if you let out even a little bit, you're going to hit the jump differently. The the wheels, uh, If you turn the wheel one way or the other, 
the car is going to get unsettled in the air. You might <laughs> you might land sideways. You might land upside down. Uh, this is truly an art form that you need to practice. This isn't something you're just going to go in there and you're going to be perfect from the start. Uh, you might consider yourself a wheel man, but if you don't practice this, you will not have it. Uh, <laughs> practice, practice, practice. Kind of feel like the uh, the reverse Allen Iverson here. You gotta you gotta hit this right, and you can't do that unless you, you run through it a little bit. But once you get it at one track, you'll start to pick it up quicker on the other tracks. So slide in, angle at the wall, fourth gear, throttle out, throttle in. I'm sliding into this next to the last turn, flipping the curb, and the car is straight for this final little short straight getting into the, uh, uh, I guess you can call this a hairpin. Not sure if that's what it's actually referenced. I'm not really big on rallycross culture, and I don't... Uh, <laughs> I don't watch a lot of rallycross racing, surprising, uh, but I'm going to reference this as a hairpin for the sake of this video. Yeah, I'm in the break here. Uh, brakes make you slide, but uh, applying them early helps you get the car settled. And right here, you want to be, you want to you have the the right side tires on the asphalt. Super important to get your tires on the asphalt helps turn the car. It's almost like a cheat code. Some people might look at this and have certain feelings towards it. This is what you got to do to be fast uh, at this track specifically. But if you hit the asphalt too much, you will flip yourself. You will unsettle yourself. You, you can just spin yourself off this curb. You want to just get the right sides on the curb. And you want to, again, you want to practice this a lot so you can get the feel of the curb. You want to know exactly what the car does when it touches that because if you go in into it too hard, you're going to wreck yourself. If you don't go into it hard enough, you're going to lose several valuable tenths or or you may even miss the asphalt entirely and be back on the dirt where you're going to, again, lose several valuable tenths. So I'm just keeping it on the asphalt as, as much as I can. You can look at my throttle application here. I'm uh, around a half throttle here because I don't want to... to spin the tires too much and, and send myself spinning. Again though with the Beetle lights, uh you don't have to worry as much about that because you don't get uh you don't get the same power as you do with the typical rally cross cars. Coming out, uh I'm in third gear. I and it looks like I'm going kinda slow here, which you have to. You have to treat this exit as an entirely different corner. So you're through the hairpin, uh you're you're done with that corner. You're on now on a short straight and you're going into a separate corner. Again, this curb, super important. You want to just flip it right there. And I think I actually missed the turtle, which is okay here, because this could send you off track the other direction if you hit it too hard. Uh, but again, it, the, the asphalt. The asphalt is super important for getting grip uh, in the tires, and it helps you settle the car. It helps you get in a straight line and get uh, the last section of the track uh, finished as quick as possible. So you see me here. I get the car settled as quick as I can. I just want to flip that last curve barely and I'm gonna get across the straight you can see myself setting myself up for the next turn once again uh, anyway so so that's my my walk through the track you can kind of understand my philosophy approaching this uh, I ran a 37 5 6 5 here and this is this isn't a practice session this is the fastest lap I've ever run at this track I typically run low 38s high 37s for qualifying uh, I, usually my, my fastest lap in race is around the same so uh, I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, I will also follow this up with a short uh, walkthrough of the Joker. It, it's pretty straightforward, though. There's not a whole lot uh, there. It, it's a pretty easy Joker. And then after that, I will uh, I will leave you with the full uninterrupted lap, so you can uh, you can watch the entirety without my voice distracting you. Okay, so now to go through a quick walkthrough of uh, the first turn and the Joker lap on turn one. So I want to go ahead and cover the, the first turn here because it gives you a better idea of what I do to protect the lead when I'm starting from the pole. You know, if you don't start on the pole or, or if you're starting uh, later or further back in the, in the field, this approach might not apply to you. But what I like to do, uh, when I'm starting up front, I... I tend to take the joker on the very first lap because uh, that prevents me from being stuck behind someone else that might be slower than me. So if somebody starts P4 or P5 and they're a half a second to a second behind me, 
and they take the Joker on the first lap, there's a chance that I will catch them and my uh, I'll be slowed down. You know, I, I won't be able to run my typical race lap because I'll have to work to get around them. So I almost always take the Joker on the first lap. And if I am on the pole, I, I always do. Like, I just can't think of a scenario where I wouldn't uh, unless maybe someone clipped me and I, I wasn't able to, to enter the Joker. But anyway, so uh, going into the first turn here, maybe this is turn two again, I'm not sure. But the turn going into the S's, I tend to enter lower. And I'll, I'll just go to the guy behind me. Uh, it's another fast guy that runs a lot of Beetle Lights. Uh, if, you, if you look here, so, so what this does, uh, I mean, I guess I, I took an even wider turn than what he did there. But as long as I'm not giving a lot of room on the bottom, uh, no one's able to dive under me because people like to do that sometimes. Uh, this was actually a really good race. I uh, had a lot of really good people in here that have really good racing etiquette, so I, I knew it wasn't going to happen here. So I didn't quite block that that bottom line like I, I might typically do that uh, uh, do right there. So uh, again, I I'm not able to to use the grass there or really even that strip of of asphalt coming out of the turn just because of the angle I have to turn uh, to use on the first on the first lap, but here coming through the s's i am able to build up a little bit more speed so i don't have to slow down like i usually would to get into the jump so i'm just gassing it right here 100 percent throttle i know i'm going to enter, enter the the joker with a lot of speed and i'm getting up to sixth gear here and then i'm kind of letting off early so you have to let off a little bit earlier than you think you have to because again you're on asphalt here you're, it's a left turn whereas most turns on this track are, are right turns uh, especially the asphalt turns so the, the car doesn't tend to, to turn to the left uh, with the, the fixed setup uh, as much as it does to the right. Of course, you know, if you're playing around in, in a D-Class series, you can you can tinker the setup a little bit to make it turn left a little bit better. But getting into the, the turn here, I'm dropping down the fourth gear. Sometimes I go ahead and go down the third gear. And then I'm letting it run wide, and I'm kind of feeling the car slide. And once I feel that, that rear grip pick up, uh, which you can feel if you have force feedback in your wheel or, or you have the force feedback in your pedals. Uh, I use the, the Club Sport V3s from Fnatic. Uh, you can feel the, the tires get some grip. Once that happens, you're free to get it out of here. And again, uh, I'm trying to get the car as straight, uh, straight of a line as I can, as quick as possible. I touch the, the, uh, the asphalt there a little bit, which gives me some grip and, and helps straighten me out a uh, little and so I was struggling a little bit here. Got, got on the throttle a little bit too early, and and they got out. I uh, uh, got out uh, onto the the dirt a little bit quicker, quicker than I wanted. The asphalt helped uh, straighten me out real quick. But anyway, uh, Joker's pretty straightforward. You just want to remember as you're entering, uh, you want to get off the throttle a little bit sooner than you think you have to, and try to get yourself in a straight line coming out. That's all there is to it. So. I'm going to go ahead and leave you with uh, my full and uninterrupted hot lap, no joker. Uh, thank you for watching, and I uh, I hope this helps you. If 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 you find any uh, if you find any speed after watching this, please let me know. Thank you.